What is going on, all you tiny people? Welcome to the top four absolutely awesome base building locations in Grounded. I am Draco Invictus, and I am going to take you on a tour of what I feel is the four best base locations in the game. Because if you only set up one base, you end up doing quite a bit of running to get around the map. So while it might take a little bit more work, this guide is designed to make sure you are only right around the corner from a base to drop off your plunder, refill those depleted hunger and thirst meters, have a closer spawn point in case you meet your untimely demise, or just rest for the night. I don't think that there is a single best location to set up your base of operations in the game, as we are all over the map, literally. As the game unfolds and more areas are opened up to explore, I will be making updates to this video. So if this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell notification icon so that you get notified the next time I post a video. My channel is devoted to helping you get the most out of the game. If you're interested in showing me some support for the channel and want to help out financially, I do have a Patreon page set up with some pretty cool perks. If you don't want to do a monthly subscription but still want to pitch in, check out the link to my coffee.com account where you can make a one-time donation. Links for both are in the description below. Even if you don't want to or can't support the channel financially, tap that thumbs up button below the video and show me some love that way. It is all very much appreciated. I'll be putting timestamps in the description for each of the location areas as well, as well as other videos that may help you get the most out of Grounded. So let's get to it. All right, so these locations aren't listed from best to worst or even worst to best. I listed these locations based on what you'll need as the game unfolds. So first on our list is the base ball. You discover the base ball at the very start of the game, and this location is actually very centrally located in the yard. As you can see from this overhead shot, the base ball is just to the left of center in the yard and might very well become your hub to branch out to other locations. The base ball has a natural entrance via the stick, but unless you want to walk a tightrope, in the dark, uphill, you might want to create your own way to get onto the ball. As you can see from this build I did during my live stream, you can build quite the base on top of the ball, giving you a great vantage point to plan out your day's adventures. Let's get into some of the pros and cons of setting up your base here. For starters, it is a great starting location. You become very familiar with the area surrounding the baseball very early in the game, so it becomes very easy to navigate around. It's also close to an analyzer. Just a short walk down the path leads you to the first analyzer you should have discovered in the game. As you find more things to scan, having an analyzer close is very beneficial. You're also away from predators. Only having ground-based predators right now means being off the ground is where you want to be. You don't have to worry about walking out your door to meet a wolf spider directly. And ants won't steal from your chest. I've seen an ant steal from a chest that was two floors above it. So getting off the ground is also a fantastic benefit here. There are several dandelions and some tier two weeds in the area that'll help you get your place built. Now, some of the cons are it's pretty far from Burgle and getting your daily quests. Running through the forest of grass day after day and going all the way around the oak tree cuts out a bit of daylight that could otherwise be used actually completing quests. Going along with the first con, everywhere is a hike. If you're working on quests that take you over to the hedge or other corners of the map, it's quite the hike to return home with your plunder and oftentimes takes you right into patrol paths of nasty critters that want to ruin your day. So my final thoughts on the baseball, like I said at the beginning, this location could very well be your biggest base as it could become your hub as you move from location to location. Don't discount this great starting spot. Moving on to number two, the flower bed. The flower bed, and this log in particular, is the favorite of many players. It offers a lot of advantages and has you poised to be in the middle of action as new content rolls out involving the flowers and the pond. It also has a few drawbacks that we'll get to in just a little bit. Having a base anywhere in this location means you're ready to tackle the upcoming game update that should feature the bees and the roses, as well as the pond and what it's going to have to offer us. Be careful with this location though, as you'll have some grumpy neighbors that won't like you moving in. 
Some of the pros of the flower bed include you can elevate yourself well once you get on the log or any of the roots closer to the oak tree for that matter. You're close to Burgle and getting your daily quest will be easy. You're ready to take on the new content involving the flower bed and the pond. There are plenty of tier 2 weeds in the area to help you build up quickly. Some of the cons include orb weavers live along the flower bed wall and will be walking past during their patrols. The oak tree wolf spiders also like to come past during their daily walks. You're pretty far from other areas of the yard and it'll be quite the hike to get anywhere else. Alright, moving on to location number 3, the hedge. Welcome to the hedge. This is an interesting area of the map because you're surrounded by some pretty nasty bugs but none are super close to your base. I was torn on where to actually build a base over here as there's many great places to set up camp. During my survival live stream, I actually set up a base within the hedge itself with the analyzer station pretty much outside my door. For this video, I chose to build up on this route to give myself a view. But like I said, there are many great spots in the area for you to call home. Now, why build a base over in this corner? Well, two words sum that up, bury chunks. To create most of the tier 2 gear that's in this game, you will need berry leather to make it. Since the hedge is where you find the berries, it only makes sense to have a base close where you can store all those chunks and convert it into berry leather. I also think that as we get more content, this area will come to life with new critters that are introduced into the game. If you walk around this flooded area, there aren't many bugs at all, and no spiders until you get under the hedge itself. So plop down a little shoreline cottage and get your berry on. Some of the pros of this area are that you don't have to worry about being bothered by bugs too much. Unless you wander a bit further off, the beetles that live in the nearby rocks won't even chase you all the way over here. You can get all the berries you will ever need. Since it takes three berry chunks to make a single berry leather, having a base close so when your inventory is full means you don't have far to go to drop off your load. There are a crap ton of clay around the water to help you with your base construction. We also know that the hedge lab will soon be more content for us to enjoy, and having a base close means you can get to the action there quickly. One of the single biggest cons for this area is the lack of significant weeds for construction. You're going to have to bring them over or use the clay for your foundation, and yes, you can use the clay on the roots just like you can use scaffolding. Putting a base in the corner of the map also means that you're going for long walks in enemy territory to get anywhere else. Moving on to location number four, the Flat Rock. Last but certainly not least is the Flat Rock. This location can lend itself to monster builds as you can see here. Taking a look at the overhead, we can see that the Flat Rock puts us close to the pond, but it also offers other advantages as well. As the game expands further west into the under construction zone with the picnic table, you're going to be able to hit it hoop style. So while this location isn't a hot zone right now, we are planning for the future with this location. Let's go over some pros and cons. You can build big in this location and make some incredible structures if that is your thing. It sure is mine. There are lots of dandelion and tier 2 weeds in the area to help with all that building you might want to do. You're relatively close to an analyzer station which is just on the other side of the flower bed. You are close to the pond for everything we'll need to do there. You will have a place close to new areas as the game continues its development. Some of the cons, as with the other flower bed location, you will have lots of orb weavers on the ground around the rock, and we know how orb weavers feel about new neighbors. And you're pretty far from most of the current action in the game, and will have to walk a fair distance to do most things. Well, those are the four locations you should consider when planning out base locations and grounded. Did I pick some of your favorite spots? Did I miss a great spot that everyone should know about? Let me know down in the comments section below. I love hearing from everyone. Just so you know, I'm currently live streaming Grounded four times a week right here on my YouTube channel. So subscribing and hitting that bell notification will let you know when I go live. I'm also planning more tips and tricks videos just like this one. Do you have a suggestion for something I should cover? I'd love to hear about it. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video on some awesome base locations in Grounded. I look forward to making more great content for this game as it continues its development. Until next time, take care of yourself out there. This is Draco Invictus saying this has been the greatest day in my life. See ya!